proceed to give my presentation about uh, AI application in uh, intrusion detection for IoT devices. So uh, today's agenda is the following. Uh, I'll give uh, a brief overview about uh, the problem that we're trying to solve uh, with our work. Uh, then I I'll follow it with uh, intrusion detection systems, a brief overview about the uh, federated learning. Uh, then I'll introduce you to our solution uh, and our whole process. And uh, I'll finish it up with some uh, of our current results. So uh, as mentioned before, there is a significant amount of progress that is being made uh, in the field of IoT. And uh, as a result, there has been a, an increased amount of deployed IoT devices and services in various sectors. And uh, so uh, the increased application of IoT devices in uh, you know, various sectors of our, of our society and their limitations comes to serve is a motivation for malicious entities to take advantage of uh, such devices and services and use them for their own gain. And uh, as the last couple of years, we've witnessed a significant amount of increase uh, in the number of threats, risks, and high profile incidents in that IoT devices, which originates and increases the need for better security measures for uh, these kinds of uh, technologies. So, one of the ways that we can enhance the security of such devices is to use techniques that monitor the device's behavior internally and catch any side of unusual uh, behavior. Uh, this is achieved with the, the development of, uh, one of the ways that you can achieve this is through the development of uh, intrusion detection systems, uh, which aim to detect anomalous behavior that occur on the device uh, level. And uh, furthermore, uh, this whole process can be automated. Uh, intrusion detection systems can uh, apply in artificial intelligence in the process uh, of classification of events that are uh, happening in the device itself. And not only that, but also automate the process of uh, updating the intrusion detection models uh, via a pres privacy preserving uh, manner, which will, uh, we will explain in a later section. So regarding intrusion detection systems, um, there, uh, there are many types of uh, intrusion detection systems, but uh, the one we are focusing on is uh, named uh, host intrusion detection systems, which are specialized for IoT devices. And uh, host intrusion detection systems are usually installed uh, on, the, on the devices themselves and are implemented to analyze the behavior of the device uh, of the operating system and the applications that reside in it. Uh, it examines the common events that are specific to the host device, such as the applications that are used, what files are being accessed, permission changes, uh, sequences of system calls, and uh, authentication attempts, for example. Uh, it would, it uh, often logs activities and discovers to, in the, says it to a um, secure database uh, and checks to see whether the events match any malicious event recorded or listed in the in the database. So uh, host, uh, host based uh, intrusion detection systems are important in detecting internal attacks that, that, that target a specific system. So for instance, detecting uh, malicious scripts or any kinds of malware in the system. So uh, for intrusion detection systems, there has uh, been uh, a number of approaches that can be employed uh, in order to detect intrusions, one of which is through anomaly detection. Another way we can do it is through uh, signature-based, and often uh, many implementations will uh, have an hybrid between the two approaches. And uh, the types of attacks that can be uh, detected by these kinds of systems are such as brute force attacks, uh, new super users, uh, DOS attacks, or even network probing attacks. So the two approaches that I mentioned previously have two different uh, aims. On the one hand, signature-based intrusion detection systems are typically best used for identifying known threats. Uh, they operate by using a 
programmed list of known threats and their indicators of compromise. Um, and on the other hand, anomaly based intrusive detection systems can alert you for suspicious activity that may be unknown by the, the, the database. Instead uh, of searching for known threats, an anomaly detection system creates a uh, baseline for uh, the, the, the normal behavior of the system. So it essentially, the baseline represents how the system normally behaves and anything that goes outside that baseline is treated as an, an intrusion. So the dis disadvantage here is uh, that many non-malicious behaviors will get uh, flagged uh, by simply being atypical and the increased likelihood for false positives with anomaly uh, inter intrusion detection systems can require additional time and uh, resources to investigate all the possible uh, alerts uh, to potential threats. And uh, at the same time, the, the potential advantage is disadvantage is that what makes an uh, anomaly intrusion detection is able, uh, is able to detect uh, um, novel attacks that uh, signature-based uh, detec uh, detection systems cannot uh, detect. So signature-based is essentially limited to a list of known uh, and existing threats. Um, on the other hand, is also has a high processing speed and a greater accuracy for known uh, attacks. So whereas the anomaly detection gives us the advantage of novel attacks and enables us to create models uh, in accordance with normal, normal behavior of the device, therefore uh, we uh, use it as our approach uh, for uh, our solution. So there is many, uh, we have uh, many, many ways that we can uh, model machine learning algorithms uh, in order to detect uh, anomalies um, by applying approaches that are based on, for instance, supervised learning when we have uh, uh, labeled data um, or even supervised learning when we have partly uh, labeled data and uh, data that is not uh, known if it is uh, an intrusion or normal behavior and even so unsupervised learning when our data is not labeled at all. So we apply algorithms such as one based on clustering like uh, k-means. Uh, however, machine learning, uh, le machine learning does have some limitations, uh, namely uh, the centralized traditional approaches of machine learning have some challenges. So we aim to address uh, these um, challenges that are affect mainly IoT based scenarios, which are based on the connect connectivity of the devices, the latency, and uh, essentially also the privacy of the users that use uh, the IT services and uh, the devices. So what's the solution uh, for these issues? Well, one of the machine learning methods that enables us to address the mentioned problem is that is the one named uh, federate learning. So this concept of um, federate learning will help us to tackle the major issues of uh, centralized machine learning approaches, uh, which gives us leverage in preserving um, the privacy of uh, IoT uh, clients in the, in the network while uh, using uh, local hardware resources to build our machine learning models uh, via a decentralized training uh, manner. So uh, the, 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 the definition of federated learning is very simple. Uh, the concept of federated learning is one where the setting is uh, composed of multiple clients that collaborate in uh, solving a machine learning uh, problem using the coordination of uh, a central entity. Um, however, a, a client's uh, data is never shared. So uh, private, uh, private data that is pertaining to the local device is never shared with external entities. Instead, the client retrains its models with data that was collected locally and shares the models, uh, the model parameters with the central server, which then aggregates and shares the parameters and 
then uh, proceeds uh, to do the next step. So this is a very simplistic view of, uh, of the whole uh, <coughs> further learning process. So we start with uh, initializing the model. It, this can be a randomly initialized model or a pre-trained pre -trained model. So the central entity shares the, the model with its clients. The clients locally train the model with uh, the, the, the local data that they collect and then uh, share the parameters with the, the central entity, which then proceeds to aggregate and send the, the model back to the clients, which then update the, the models that they have with the global model, and then uh, proceed to, to, to do um, the, the, the process uh, again. So, uh, this concept, although it's very new, uh, has already been employed in various applications. One of the first applications to use it was actually the Gboard on Android, and many other applications use it as well, like Siri Voice Assistant and other popular health data devices. Uh, the, and um, in addition, this concept uh, of learning uh, is going to be discussed in more depth in the next presentation. I'm just uh, giving a, a basic overview of the, the concept. So our solution is uh, named the device behavior monitoring. The, the solution is essentially a prototype of a intrusion detection system that is based on system call analysis. Uh, the intrusion detection system is composed by a set of subcomponents that collect and classify the events with the use of lightweight uh, machine learning models and which are then updated via a federal learning scheme that ensures the privacy of the devices. So here we have a simple view of a proposed architecture for our solution, uh, starting by the data extraction model, uh, which gives us the, the extraction of device locks in real time. This module, module extracts system call logs of the device host uh, in real time. Um, this uh, data is then collected uh, and processed by the data preparation model. This step, we use a number of feature extraction model methods uh, where natural language processing techniques are applied in order to create a feature uh, vector. And then the resulting data is then sent to an a input um, machine learning model for for event classification. Um, so the, the model classification consists of a binary output where zero represents a benign behavior and one represents malicious activity. And uh, finally, there is also a central server. As mentioned, this module aggregates the collected models that are obtained through local model, model training and average uh, model is sent to the clients for, for an update. OK, so to do our uh, training of intrusion detection models, we proceed to use two settings for training the models. Uh, the first setting is, is used to do a pre-trained version of our models that are going to be deployed on the local devices which is a centralized, centralized uh, approach. And following that, uh, the federated learning uh, approach will enable us to keep update, uh, to update the models via a decentralized learning manner in order to keep uh, up to date with new attacks. So as mentioned previously, we use system call log data in order to perform the intrusion detection. Uh, system calls are a special function that uh, essentially characterize the, the behavior of specific processes that are running on the operating system level. And by having that kind of information about the processes, uh, how the processes uh, behave normally, it enables us to track the applications and detect when there is a process that creates an anomalous uh, system call that is out of place. So whenever a device is breached, uh, the supposition is that it is it will generate an anomalous system call invocation and will 
with our solution, we are going to detect those instances of uh, anomalous behavior. So finishing off with the current experimental results, uh, we can see that we were able to get uh, essentially good uh, results with our approach, which has shown that uh, AI-based techniques can be extremely useful in detecting intrusion detection of, based on uh, system calls. However, there are some issues that uh, need to be addressed with these results, uh, mainly the rate of false positive uh, weight as in uh, intrusion detection systems, ideally that rate needs to be uh, zero in, in order to minimize the, the false positive rate. So uh, yes, this is essentially our results. Okay, uh, so to wrap up this uh, presentation, uh, so we were able with our work to create a prototype that monitors the device behavior in real time and perform intrusion detections and uh, at the same time update the models and in a privacy preserving manner. And with that, we will contribute to the prevention of incoming attacks. And uh, for future aspects to explore, as mentioned previously, uh, we will work on improving the false positive rates, uh, tackle device heterogeneity, so how our solution behaves in different uh, kinds of hardware. And also we will diversify attack vectors using used uh, in the training of the IDS uh, systems. And that is it. Uh, thank you for your attention.